Welcome everybody to our August Health Made Simple with me, yours truly, Donna Woods from Photonic Health. And um, I think this is our sixth one. And we started doing this at the start of COVID and it's turned out to be lots of fun and informative for a lot of our listeners and visitors. And um, our goal is to provide you access to true experts in their respective fields and be able to provide you guys some additional solutions and uh, to cut through a lot of the noise that is out there today with uh, social media and everything. And so I am super excited today. Our topic is challenges in equine nutrition. So before we get started, if you could please make sure that you have yourself muted, um, that would be fabulous. What we're going to do is if you have any questions anytime throughout the presentation, please chat them to us. Um, if you look at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a little button that says chat. You just click on that and then you can just chat your question. We do have um, Alex, who is part of our team working beside, behind the scenes here. And she will respond to you. And if, uh, and if she does not respond to you, what we will do is we will, I will read the question and ask Miss Claudia and uh, get you some more information. So, um, and remember that this will be available as a replay. So if you missed it, don't worry. Or if you've got to leave early, um, we will be sending out the recording to you. So, um, because they're always packed with lots of information. So sometimes it's always good to go back and listen to it a second time or even a third time. So. Without further ado, I would like to introduce you to our special guest presenter this month, and her name is Claudia Garner. She is from Stance Global or Stance Equine, and Miss Claudia comes to us with an incredible wealth of knowledge. We actually met her, um, Brian and I, um, I think, gosh, it's been about five, six years ago. We uh, switched all of the feed that our horses are on to a product called Cool Stance, and it's a coconut meal. Um, and we, we switched over to it because we had tried it, and we saw unbelievable results with our horses, and we went, whoa, wait a minute. This product is amazing, and we... Uh, loved it so much that we became distributors for it. And Miss Claudia happens to, her daughter runs the company now um, because Miss Claudia is backing off a little bit. Um, however, she started this company seven years ago. They are the leading distributor in the world, not just in the United States, in the world for Cool Stance. And uh, this, uh, Claudia is just an absolute walking encyclopedia of knowledge when it comes to horses. She's been involved in horses from a competitive perspective nearly her entire life. Um, she is also a, a trimmer. I don't want to use the word farrier, but she is a trimmer. She had her own trimming school. Um, she has trained horses. She's been heavily involved in virtually every single aspect of the horse, whether it's the mental, emotional training perspective to the nutrition perspective to the hoof perspective. And so we always love uh, visiting with her because Brian and I always learn a lot from her. And so uh, I asked her to join us today because there are a lot of challenges in equine nutrition. And when we go out and we see horses and we go out on farm calls, you know, that's kind of the struggle. It's, you know, is it the feet? Is it the teeth? Is it the saddle? Is it the body? Or is it the feed? And it's kind of, you know, 
what is what is the most important and what is the root cause and through our own journey even with our own health and our animals health um quality food quality supplements balancing all of that is paramount to everything else and it also is incredibly challenging these days so miss claudia welcome to our show we're so happy to have you and I am going to turn it over to you because you know way more about this topic and um, what are you finding? Why has this become, you got to choose the topic today and that you chose challenges in equine nutrition. So can you talk further on why you chose to go through the challenges that horse owners are experiencing today? Yeah, um, because I experienced them myself. That's where I'm course coming from. When I first got into call stands, it was as a, I was running a hoof clinic. I had a lot of sick horses and the last thing they needed was bad nutrition. So I consulted with a lot of different people and certainly everybody had something to sell and um, they always had a good talk about it. And I was impressed by the first one, so I tried that. It was very expensive. I was, after a few months, it didn't quite work out. Um, I tried the next one, which was more expensive and more difficult. Um, after a few months, it didn't quite work out. And I said, I'm done with this. I'm going to feed organic oats and hay and end of story. So, and then I got dragged to a seminar by some Australian guy. And I really didn't want to go, but all my friends were going. And um, they had promised if I come, we go all to dinner afterwards. And... I like to go to dinner with people. <laughs> me too. <laughs> My staff won't laughs at me. She's like, we always know Donna's up for either lunch or dinner. So, <laughs> so I, I went and I listened to this guy for a little bit of an hour. And I thought, he makes good sense. And this stuff isn't expensive. I'm going to try this. And lo and behold, I saw a huge difference for the first time in months and months, in years. And um, one thing came to another. I was in the hoof care teaching world. I got an invitation to Australia. Um, I asked the company in Australia to sponsor my flight. They did. I invited them to come to the seminars and teach the nutrition part. They did. We became friends eventually. I became their distributor in the United States, and the rest is history. The rest is history. And what I, first of all, what I want to say about all of this is um, this is not a scientific presentation. I am not one who reads endless scientific papers um, about this, but I do read a lot. And when I am working on something, I really get into it a lot. And I think about it all the time. I, even so, I turned the company over to my daughter in March of 2018. I'm still thinking about cold stands every day. And not about cold stands per se, but about forest nutrition. And when yes. I read something, Ms. Claudia, every, um, we're getting a lot of comments that uh, people are really having a hard time hearing you. Hmm. So I don't know if you can either, um, I, I don't know if, do you have a set of headphones like readily available that you can put in because then it would put the microphone right next to your face? Sorry, everybody. 
I thought it, I thought it was just my computer because Brian didn't have a problem hearing her before we started and neither did Alex. So, um, uh, so we just, we just kind of thought it was mine cause I'm running this on a 13 year old laptop. <laughs> I happen to have a love affair with my laptop. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's one of those things. <laughs> All right, Miss Claudia. I don't know. It's just oh, much better. Thank you so much. <laughs> much, much, much better. We just want to make sure that everybody can hear you. Oh, no, so. I'm, I'm glad this was so simple to do because I'm not such a tech wizard. Um, so where was I? No, honey, my dog wants to talk to. Not happening. Stay <laughs> um, so um, why 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 um, challenges in equine nutrition? Because I see a lot of people getting sucked into what the industry promises them. Yeah, it's that simple. Yeah. You know, everybody has something to sell. And today we have the internet and everybody has a, cu a huge program. Um, one of our dealers, um, a lot of them are feed stores. They have a, uh, a, a promotion going on from Purina at the moment. And boy, every day they put something out on Facebook how great this Purina feed is. So this is what I want to talk a little bit about. Yes. Um, and I have also taken a lot of the information from um, from the human field because it is a lot of it is not that different. Right. You no, know, it it's it's true for us as well. We need to eat a certain way in order to feel our very best. Right. And um, I, I owe a lot of um, thanks to all those people who have helped to educate me um, over the years. And the dogs are playing in the background. They we see kill. that. <laughs> <laughs> they will not kill each other. <laughs> so the, one of the questions is, maybe I can throw something at them. No. Um, one of the questions that I have for the horse owners is, what is your biggest fear? And in general, it is that the horse gets sick in some way or form. You know, I'm not talking about trauma. Trauma is something we can see, you know, a deep cut, um, um, they ran into the fence, they got kicked, you know, you can see this. But all these little things that we can't see, you know, the horse is not quite right, he's a little bit lame, so what do you do? Now, this community, you pull out your red light, right after you said at fa on Facebook that your horse has this and this problem, and you... Um, <laughs> And what would you do, Donna? <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, yeah. we, we would tell everybody, do your basic assessment yeah. and grab your red yeah. lights and, and, and get, yeah. at, get after it and stay on it until it's gone. Yeah. And then you do this. And um, if you're lucky, it works. If you're not so lucky, it doesn't work. And then you call the vet. That's the next step. Um, when the veterinarian is gone and has left you with a hefty bill and some medication, um, you pull out the red light again and you do the medication and the red light. And when that doesn't work, then you take the horse to the clinic. And now it gets really expensive. And now you can't use the red light because you can't get to the horse anymore. So. Correct. Or the clinics won't let you. Or... Yeah, You know, the, Claudia, the other thing that we've found is, you know, what you touched on. So we kind of joke within the horse industry, if you ask um, three different horse people, 
Mm -hmm. the same question, you're going to get about 12 different answers. Yep. And so what ends up happening is a lot of people can get confused, overwhelmed. Um, and like you said, everybody's trying to sell something and, and that's not a bad thing, but at, at the end of the day, you know, like, and I'm just going to pick on Purina because I'm pretty familiar with their products we used Purina products when we got started in horses a long time ago. We had an old horse. She, was, she lived to 35. Mm -hmm. We were feeding her, and she's a tiny little Arab. She's like 14 too. this tiny little compact ball of fire, right? Mm -hmm. um, and she started dropping weight. So we didn't know what to do. And so... We were feeding her nine pounds of equine senior a day in addition to unlimited hay. Yep. And she still looked like a bag of bones. And she lived at 35 as a bag of bones. But, you know, it was so frustrating because, you know, we tried the typical stuff. We added corn oil. We added this oil. You know, we added all of the – we added beet pulp and we – to get weight on her and nothing worked. And so in hindsight, knowing what we know now, I'm like, dang, I wish we would have known about Cool Stance and all of their amazing products and how important the right types of feed, the right types of fat can really have a huge impact on health. Yeah. So uh, I want to start somewhere else. Um, I, I'll talk about Purina later. <laughs> What, what I learned a while ago, quite a while ago um, made a huge impression on me. There's always so few things that make a big impression in your life. And that was by uh, Scott Algren, who has written um, a book about this. And to, to sum it up is every body is made up by cells. And there's a good guess that, and I only have the human numbers, that in a 160-pound human, um, the body is made up about, uh, by about 30, 000, 30 trillion cells. Yeah. That's a huge amount. Sorry, but it gets too loud. <laughs> uh, and every second, every second, one million cells in your body die off. And these cells that die off need to be replaced. And they can only be replaced by good cells if they get good nutrition. Because the cells are grown by nutrition. And when you do not, when you want better cells, you have to get better nutrition. It's that simple. Right. So you cannot, no, you cannot go to McDonald's and think that your skin starts glowing. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Yeah? So the, just keep that in mind. I, I think this was really important. And when we talk about challenge in equine nutrition, we always think about feed or food. But most important to begin with is water. Water needs to be clean, cool, and filtered. Ask yourself when you look at your water, when you look at the water that your horses drink, would I drink this? Not would I drink this when I'm hot and sweaty, but would I drink this every day? Every day. Yeah? If you are on, a, um, on municipal water, you, your water has chlor chlorine in it, it has fluoride in it, it has mercury in it, it has arsenic in it, you name it. So you need not only to have clean and cool water, but you also have to have filtered water. 
And one thing that a lot of people don't know um, about the water is when you run your water through a colored hose, black or green or whatever the color is of your hose, that hose leaches toxins into the water. So you need to get human grade, they are white hoses. If you run from a hose from the faucet to the bucket or to whatever. But if you don't want to dip your cup into that water and drink out of that bucket, don't make your horse drink it. <laughs> He's not doing well on this. And there was years ago a, a really bad case of horses dying off in the West um, from fluoride poisoning. Fluoride is highly toxic. Why we have it in the drinking water is beyond me, but let's not go there. <laughs> right. <laughs> the, the next thing that is not much talked about is hay. Hay is really important. Horses should have hay 24 hours a day in front of them if, if they don't have pasture. Right. You know, if my pasture is at the moment almost two feet high, if I would have horses on that pasture, they wouldn't need hay right. extra. Yeah, but yeah. if they have, if you feed hay, it needs to be available 24 7. Horses are continual grazers. They need to eat all the time. And if you throw it out in a big bale or in a small bale or in flakes, I've done all of this, I've tried this all, um, it will be very messy and they will waste a lot of hay. But if you put it in one of the slow feeding nets, and if your horses have shoes on, then put that net in a, in a box, um, you can save a lot of hay. Your horses have all the time hay in front of them. And there is a lot of information about slow feeding um, on the internet on the slowfeeding.com. Yes. It's that simple. Yeah. Um, it is also something with the hay that you need to get your hay tested. If, you're, if the person that sells it to you doesn't have it tested, and I would question this at times um, because there are shady characters in every industry, um, get it yourself tested. Buy your entire hay supply at once for the year um, and get it tested. Um, with a, you, there is... Um, Equi, Equi Analytical is um, doing hay testing. It's relatively inexpensive. And what's the name of that company again, Claudia? Equi, Equi Analytical. E Q U I A N A L Y T I C A L dot com. Okay. Awesome. And. Um, so, but that gives you only how much protein the hay has and how much and, and, and. What it doesn't give you, and this is something, you know, um, we talked about this before, um, that 25, 30 years ago, we didn't have these problems that we have today with horses. We had a laminitic horse here or there. We had a horse with skin problems here or there but we didn't have the majority crying that their horses are lame and that their skin looks horrible. And we didn't have Cushing's and all these things. But we also didn't have something else. We didn't have glyphosate. And what they do today, glyphosate is the uh, main ingredient or the active ingredient in Roundup. Yeah. And what they do today, the big hay farmers, um, that supply you with this wonderful green looking hay that smells heavenly, um, but they spray it before they harvest it with glyphosate because that makes the, the grass wilt faster and it comes in drier and they get more of it harvested. And 
you know, with there's all these ideas why horses have all these new diseases. And I am not sure that it doesn't come from that. <coughs> the best thing you could get on hay would be organic hay. And you're not getting organic hay if you don't ask for it. Right. You have to pound on your hay supplier for organic hay. Again and again and again till you get it. Or you have to grow it yourself. Right. We have here on, on this farm um, grown organic hay for over 15 years. Yeah. And this brings us later to something totally different. I, I come back to that. But, um, and, and it, it has to do with pasture. And um, pasture is really important for horses. It is really important that they have grass to eat. <coughs> but there is a problem with pastures. Most people don't have enough of it. Right. They have 20 horses on 10 acres. Right. And that is just not enough. And then what happens is the horses gnaw the pasture down to a stubble. And there's something, and I just found this out not two weeks ago. Um, it's really interesting. The shorter the grass is, the shorter the root system is. And the shorter the root system is, the more stressed the grass is. And the other thing, a short root system, when you think how the horse grabs the, grabs the hay and pulls it, bites it out of the ground, if it's really short, it pulls it up with the root, if the root is short. The Correct. other thing is that, so short grass produces a lot of sugar because yeah. it is pressed. Yeah. And when you have longer grass, and Katie Watts from safergrass.com or .org, I don't know which one it is. Um, I didn't write that down. Um, she said this a long time ago. Um, you have to let your grass grow high and dense because then the blades shade each other and the grass doesn't carry so much sugar. So what this leads to is two things. And I see this done very little, if at all. Number one is you need to mineralize and fertilize your pastures, but with an organic fertilizer and not with the usual NPK. Um, <coughs> so and then rotate, you have to practice some rotational grazing. So you let the pastures rest and grow up again after they have been eaten down to a certain, to about half a foot. Right. Yeah. You know? This is something that Brian has uh, really talks about a lot in like his uh, colic class and uh, we've got an equine ulcer class coming up and he goes through all of that and he goes so far as to talk about like even what time of the day and where the sun is will also have a determining factor of how much sugar content is in the grass. Yeah. So we go, he goes through that whole thing and it's so incredibly important and it, 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 it's easy like it's 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 just being preventive versus being on the defense and prevention you know being on offense is way easier than defense right so and when you have a pasture um you need to test your soil and you need to figure out with your extension service what kind of minerals you have in your soil because if your soil has no minerals, where's the grass going to get it from? Right. And then where are the horses going to get it from? Right. 
and and I mean you can you can supplement with minerals, but the me best minerals you can get for your horse are those who grow in the pasture, yes. through who get filtered through the um, plant, because only the mineral that is filtered through the plant is really available for the horse. Right. So, um, having said all that we come to what most people think of when they talk about nutrition, um, and that is grain. Okay. The con or, or, as they are, is, or as it should be referred to, concentrated calories. Like in, in, all, <laughs> in all honesty, horses could live fine just off hay or grass. You know, that's how they grew up. They don't eat seed heads in nature. But if we do anything with our horses and we do um, ride them or drive them or breed them or what have you, I mean, sure, you can breed a, a, a mare that is just on pasture. But your neighbors will call the humane society because the mare looks when she nurses that foal really sorry, you know. Right. <laughs> they they lose a lot of weight in that process and um people don't like that so they feed them concentrated calories and um i am almost on a daily basis because i do on a, as a volunteer for stands equine usa still nutrition um consultations um almost every day somebody calls me about what to feed their horse and I love to talk with them and, um, you know, how much and, and all these things that um, they could figure most of it out by themselves um, because Google is your friend and YouTube has an answer for everything. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there's also a lot of information on the bag. On every bag of feed, there is in the seam um, is sewn a um, bag label. And people think that what is on that bag label is what counts. And it is not. It has nothing to do with anything. Because it only guarantees you a certain amount of something. But it doesn't tell you where it comes from. So you have... <coughs> sorry. Um, you have, um, for example, on the bag label, it says this feed has 14% of protein. And you go, okay, that's good enough. You know, that's Omelene 400 has 14% of protein. And now you say, I, my horse has to work hard, I'm going to feed him that. But where does this protein come from? Where does the calcium that's in there come from? Where does um, the fat that's in that feed come from? Right. Does it come from corn oil? Does it come from soy? All these things are not on the bag label. And the bag label is the only thing that has to be on the bag. Then you have the big companies um, that have websites. Actually, almost every company that makes feed has a website. Um, and the biggest company, which is Purina, does not have their ingredients on their website. Wow. wow. I, wished I, I wished I had some red flags to wave here. <laughs> <laughs> red, red and white flags? No, just red flags. <laughs> so many, many, many come up when I when I can't find the ingredients on a on a on a f website. You know, they're not on some companies. Um, bless bless their owners have the ingredients on the bag label or on the bag, but the big companies do not, and there's a reason for this. Um, the other thing about these about all feeds is they have on the bag a certain amount of that you should feed your horse. 
Yes. If you do not feed your horse the required eight pounds of this feed, then your horse does not get the nutritional value that they promise you he would get. It has to be the entire amount. Mm. So, um, when you have a regular, when you find an ingredient list, and Neutrino has some ingredient lists, and, and you can look it up on the internet, go to some of the big companies, and they have um, ingredient lists, and they are virtually, they can be exchanged. Right. They are no different if they are Neutrina, Purina, um, or whatever their names are. Um, all the big companies, Triple Crown, it's all the same. The first, the first four, five ingredients are soy, wheat, dehydrated alfalfa meal, distiller dried grains, and so and again soy is oil right and we have to understand why that is soy is a super cheap protein it doesn't get cheaper than soy and um anyone who produces a an organic feed like um new country organics they um, produce chicken feed um, that's organic and they make a big hoopla out of it that there is no soy in their feed because soy is not good for any body, not just for horses. Soy is only good in its fermented form. And trust me, these soy products are not only not fermented, but they are also genetically modified right. and the the next thing the wheat middlings um i read a lot about wheat middlings and i got really confused because it says oh you know they're so good and they're full of nutrition and and they're just wonderful but you have to understand that the wheat middlings that the horses get or that go into animal feed those wheat middlings are an entirely different um, ball of wax than what goes into um, human consumption. And wheat middlings cost on the commodity mar market four cents a pound. Wow. So you do the math if 20 pounds of your 50 pound bag are wheat middlings. That is not really a big investment on the feed industry side. Correct. And one of my favorites is distiller dried grains because this all kind of sort of sounds as if it comes from the beer industry. <laughs> you know, and so they have a byproduct that sounds good you know nobody knows what this is well actually somebody knows what it is it is the byproduct of the ethanol industry and what happens with this stuff um, is that they um, first of all, the, the, there's a, the American Association of Feed Control Officials, oh also known as AFCO. They are the one who are in cahoots with everybody else um, in, in, the, in the industry. And whatever the feed industry demands, they allow them sooner or later to do. This is, this is not a clean playing field. And what happens is when the, the ethanol production relies on enzymes, yeast, and sugar to convert corn into fuel. 
And just as the wrong bacteria in the body can sicken people and horses, it can also cause a variety of ailments in a batch of ethanol. And the main enemy is a bacterial bug that makes lactic acid. And what these organisms do is they also compete with the yeast for the sugar. So what they do in order to combat this is they put in this slush antibiotics. Mm. And you have no idea what you're feeding there. Frankenstein's feed. Frankenstein's feed, <laughs> right? And, yeah. you know, I hate to say it, but it's, you know, there's red tape within every industry and I'm really not, you know, and there's politics and everything. Like, right. it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. There's politics within everything and it's kind of like, whatever the masses want or whatever the masses cry for is typically where everything leans toward. So, um, you know, we know that the food industry is definitely, especially the human market is definitely tainted um, and has, you know, a lot of like what we're being sold is way different than a lot of the stuff that we get. So I'm not really surprised when it comes to horse feed. Um, and yeah, and there's more. And there's more. Of course, there's more. <laughs> um, I think we all know, meanwhile, um, that MSG, monosodium glutamate, yeah. is is not healthy. Yeah, Correct. we try we try not to go to the Chinese that don't have a big sign in the in the window. No MSG used here. Right. Um, and. But I told you about AFCO, and um, so what they do occasionally is they reword, or I don't know how you say this. They put they they name things differently. Yep, and they do that. They do that within the the human food industry as well. Yeah. If they yeah. go, oh well, you know, marketing, you know, he, people have gotten onto the fact that you know, partially hydrogenated oil is bad. So we're going to come up with a whole new word for it. Right. And hopefully right. nobody will catch on. So um, it's hydrolyzed protein now. It's natural flavorings. Ah. There's nothing natural about MSG. No. It is, may show up as protein isolate. Ah. It may show up as texturized protein. So in the last 50 years, the, the, the food feed became blander and blander and no self-respecting horse would eat it. So they put all these flavorings in so that the horses will eat it. Right. And we wonder why we have a rise in unhealthy horses. So, Claudia, I'm going to jump in, and, and this is just strictly for us because we sell cool stands at our office, and we have people coming in, and they're like, oh, my horse won't eat it. And because they're used to being on this commercial feed. Right. They're, they're used to being on this commercial feed, and... So they, they just won't, you know, they won't touch it. Usually, like within a week, you know, we've got a protocol on how to wean the horses off and get them on cool stance. But um, early on in the process, you know, of course, we were freaking out because our horses love it. So we're like, we don't understand. Like, you know, even my dogs love it. So, um, yeah. And if you had chicken, they would love it too. Oh, the birds. We have a lot of wild birds. You know that. You've been to our place. So, like, the, the bluebirds and their cardinals, I have got the best fed wild birds on the farm. Like, oh, you should. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so this is, this is one of the reasons that when you switch to from a commercial feed that has all of those 
hidden things in there that yeah. really, and, and you know, MSG in itself is uh, actually a fascinating chemical. And I'm going to call it a chemical because that's what it is. Yeah. It changes the chemical structure of your brain and it tricks mm -hmm. you into thinking that that tastes good. Toxin. Yeah, it's a neurotoxin. And yeah. so I, I, just had, I just had no idea that they put it in horse feed. Like that just blows my mind. They put something else in. It's named soxiquin. That's also in dog feed, by the way. Um, and it's a preservative developed by, guess whom? Monsanto. And it originally was a rubber stabilizer. Nice. It has since been approved as a horse feed preservative and a fungicide because mold and fungicide and, and fungus um, tastes bitter. Right. So you want to get this out, you know, not out, but masked. Right. It's not, it's not going anywhere. Right. Uh, it is used in uh, horse feed to prevent rancidity. Mm -hmm. And if you, you usually, um, the big feed companies say um, they're, they're feed dealers have to sell their feet within two, three months yep. because it becomes rancid. Yep. Even so, they put all this thing, these things in. Um, a toxicin is linked to allergic reactions, skin problems, major organ failure, behavior problems, and cancer. And so, that, so that's, that, 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 that's why so many horses these days are coming up. Like it's rampant. Like people are like, Oh my yeah. God, my horse has all of these skin problems. And you know, we've tried red light. We've tried adding mm -hmm. herbs. We've tried, tried these things and we just have no idea. And it's because, well, you know, once in a while I, I add something to, to your posts and say, you may want to change the nutrition. <laughs> Right. And that's why I asked you to be on today because um, you are a wealth of knowledge and, um, and I just want to help our community really get a better understanding of what's going on behind the scenes in especially the equine feed market because it's not going, you know, as, as we're losing farms, as People are losing farmland and to big development or big corporate farming. Um, it's only beginning, going to get worse and worse and worse unless us as a collective put our foot, foot down and say, no, we're not going to, like, we're not going to accept that. And um, yeah, it's pretty scary, actually. So uh, another one is propionic acid. And um, it's, it's on your ingredient list. And it was first registered as a pesticide in 1970 mm. in, our, in our feeds. Um, I could say a lot more about this, but just take it from there because we're going to run out of time otherwise. Right. Since you don't let me talk all day. I, I know. This is the thing. I don't get to talk all day. <laughs> I know. And we've got, and we've got questions. So okay. So... And then we have finally artificial flavors. Yes. And, uh, and, and I have more to say after this, and I won't budge from that because there's more new stuff that I just found out. <laughs> um, artificial flavorings, um, trying to fool the horse into tasting apple or stuff like this. And they are chemicals that um, have side effects as allergic reactions, unexplained weight gain, bloating, flatulence, all kind of stuff. That if you then call the veterinarian, um, he he says you need to get him some ster on, on some steroids to fix the skin problems, you know, or you red light it. And the red light does well for a while till right. you feed more of this stuff and, and then it comes back. Right. So um, the last one is extruded feeds. Mm. It sounded so good, you know, and they are, they are easier to digest and they have so much nutrition in them. 
And the first memorable extruded food was Kellogg's cornflakes. And well, you know, it's like like cigarettes 50 years ago. <laughs> right. Every doctor said you should smoke a cigarette to calm your nerves. Right. And everybody said have a bowl of Kellogg's cornflakes with some milk in the morning and your day is made. Um, both have turned out not to be quite true. Correct. Um, so the... Uh, there is an excellent book out that is named Whole Food for Horses, mm. um, written by Tigger Montague, who is the owner of Biostar US, um, and it's available on Amazon. That's the cheapest place. You can also buy it from Stan's Equan USA, but we don't sell it as cheap as Amazon does. And if you have Prime, they ship it for free. I think you can even get it on Kindle. Um, so really try to read this. It's, a, it's an easy read. It's a fast read. It's well-written. Um, good book. Awesome. So that brings us to something that is really not showing up till your horse gets sick. And that is a lack of minerals. If your horses do not receive in our world today where our souls are depleted um, from minerals, if you do not give extra minerals to your whatever bland feed you feed, your horse doesn't get the right minerals. And minerals, a, a, a lack of minerals shows up in later years as some problem. You know, they get, they, they get lame, they, they don't look quite right, nobody knows what to do, and now we're back to the red light and the veterinarian and the clinic and all of this. So just to say that a good mineral supplement is more important than a feed. Yeah. Um, another, and, and the, the lack of minerals in the horse's body is accumulative. So you don't see it right away. You don't feed our minerals today and tomorrow and the next day, and it doesn't show up. And when right. the horse finally gets not unwell, let's just say unwell, you don't know what you did wrong because you do the same thing all the time and he was well all this time. And then he becomes unwell and you don't trace this back to a lack of minerals. Right. Um, and another thing that is accumulative in the horse's body is toxins. They don't show up just as, oh, to do. I don't know what happened with my horse. Yesterday he was well, today he's sick. Maybe he ate something wrong or maybe he got into something. No, toxins are accumulative. And if you feed a lot of commercial feed that is spiced with MSG and all these things, then over time, your horse becomes unwell and all of a sudden all hell breaks loose. Not enough minerals, too many toxins, sick horse. Even the air that our horses breathe is toxic. So you need to feed well. Then you add vaccinations and supplement additives and all these things. It's not enough to just feed a good feed and feed a good mineral. You also have to be very careful what's in your supplements. Right. And make sure that the additives are not synthetic because a synthetic additive cannot be processed by the horse's body. And I'm kind of hurrying through it because I can read your facial expression. They're getting kind of nervous. The questions are piling up. <laughs> yes, I know. Sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Please um, never apologize. Like that's, so, I, I knew that we were going to be challenged with trying to get this topic into a one hour presentation. <laughs> so, um, one big thing, this is something I want to talk about because I just stumbled upon this 
literally just a few days ago, and that is mold. Um, we I, I talked already a little bit about mold, how the feed industry tries to mas mask it with MSG. Another nice masker is um, molasses. Sweet feed, you can, you can throw all kind of junk into sweet feed because you, they pour so much molasses in. Molasses are cheap um, so that the horses can't detect it anymore, but the mold is still there. And there is a well-known medical practitioner, Dr. Klinghardt, and he just found out that the electromagnetic fields that we have now being turned out with the 5G, with the new wavelengths that make our internet ever so much faster, so that you don't have to sit and wait three minutes for a video to download. You can get it now in 10 seconds. Um, it in the EMFs, the electromagnetic fields that we are soon going to be exposed to everywhere, increase the toxicity of the mold by 600 times. Wow. Wow. So even more important to have clean hay, clean water, clean feed. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> so um, I, I would have a few more things, but I let it be. Just Please. because I want to be your friend still. <laughs> Oh, you know me. I love you anyways. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter. We, and, and my people were like, yes, she can keep going. Um, but um, um, let's just answer a couple questions and then see where we're at for time. And then I know you can always add. Oh, I can, I can add to this. For, for hours, right? For hours. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, how many of you, I'm just going to put this out there, how many of you would be interested if Miss Claudia offered an equine nutrition course, um, we would do it in little bite-sized pieces, how many of you would be interested in something like that? Just go ahead and put it in the chat if you guys would be interested in something like that. Um, and meanwhile, I'm going to ask you some questions. So the spelling for oxycycline, is that the name of the, or is it etho, ethocycline? Um, they wanted, they wanted to get clarification on that particular. Soxyquin. Ox I know, I know, I, I know because I've been told this many, many times. I don't hear it. I know I have an accent. So <laughs> it is E. T H O X Y Q U I N. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you for that. And um, okay, I got to go back. So let's talk about hay for a minute. Um, Lynn wants to know is red clover toxic to horses? And what variety of grass in the pasture and hay is best? That's a loaded question. I was going to say, so let's start with the, is the red clover toxic to horses? Do you know the answer? There's, there's a couple of things to be said about red clover. If you, if you have a little bit of red clover here or there, no. But if you have a lot of red clover, there's something wrong with your pasture. Right. Because it doesn't spread in a healthy pasture. And again, you need to find out what minerals your pasture is missing so that you can get rid of the clover. Right. Um, and wherever red clover grows in masses, you know, it looks real good. And you look across the field and you say, oh, they have so much to eat. Yeah, that stuff becomes toxic because horses gobble this down. It's, it's a kind of the same as if you let them just, if you open in the morning a, a 75 pound bale of alpha alpha and say, go for it, honey. Right. Yeah. Right. It's that's, that's to be said about red clover. What grass is the best? Um, again, it is so kind of how much 
pasture do you have? If you have two acres per horse, then um, a Bahia, a coastal Bermuda is great because you know it, it doesn't have a whole lot of nutrition. Um, it's, it's not very rich per se because you want your horse to be able to eat all day, but you do not want your horse to get fat. And, and there's something to be said about that too, you know? I, I get phone calls, my horse is fat, what should I feed him? Right. Uh, first of all, no concentrated calories. Right. You cannot feed yourself out of a weight problem. Right. <laughs> you have Cur- to- you're, you're absolutely right. And uh, we, we, we've seen that a lot. We see that a lot. We'll go out and see horses, clients, horses, especially you know, it's more like, wait a minute here. This horse is like, you know, she's got anhydrosis and, you know, she's, she's got heaves and she happens to be like 300 pounds overweight. Like, come on, like, let's, let's set the horse up for success here. Yeah. Um, so what about the opposite? So uh, Jan lives in, up in London, Ontario, Canada, and she says, what should I feed my 30-year-old who is skinny? She's on pasture 24-7 and also hay. She's got her on oats, groats, coconut meal, and two other meals, and she just can't get weight on her. Um, maybe the starch in the oats is too much. I'm guessing, you know, I don't see this horse. I don't have enough information. Um, uh, what other meals she's feeding. Um, so, but maybe, um, increase the copper meal. Okay. So Um, increase, increase, increase the coconut meal. Yep. Yeah and increase it to twice what the horse should eat for its weight and whatever he, do- I guess he doesn't do anything anymore. But um, no. it is really not as important how fat he is. In Canada, maybe a little bit more than here because um, it gets cold and you want to have a little bit of fat layer on the horse for the winter time, but it, it really depends how good he looks. Right. Is he, is he, look in his eyes, is he bright? You know, um, and if a horse would usually get um, two pounds of copra meal or coconut meal, um, he would need to get at least four pounds in order to put weight on. Right. And then right. there are other, all the other things to be said about this. What kind of dental care do you have? What kind of hoof care do you have? What is his pasture like? What are his pasture mates like? Um, what's his stress level like? Yeah. I have well, and I, and I, yeah, and I know Jan and I, and I've been to her farm. And so um, I know her farrier is outstanding. They've studied at the same schools that Brian has. Um, or similar, yeah, same schools that Brian has. So I know that the feet are good. Dental, I'm not sure where she is at that, but I know that Jan's pretty darn thorough on all of that stuff. And so um, I'm going to, if it's okay, because like in order to answer very specific questions like this, you you do really need more individual details and I want to get to the other questions. um, Okay, before, before we continue, let me say that. My phone number is 803, you all write this down, 422-7368, 803-422-7368. I can be reached between 10 in the morning and 4 in the afternoon under this number. If I do not answer, there are two possibilities. Either I have talked already enough for the day, (laughs) <laughs> well, I'm on the phone with somebody else. Yes. You're welcome to call to leave your number and I call you back. Wow. That's generous. Yeah? That's generous. I, I love to talk with people about nutrition. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, but you may have to try a couple of times. Awesome. 
Awesome. Do you have any recommendations for a mineral supplement? Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> My absolute favorite is Medicine Bag Complete. Um, for a couple of reasons, the ingredients are mostly natural which means it's plant ingredients that have filtered the minerals through them. Um, and it has no fillers. And it is reasonably easy to feed because it's just a scoop a day. It's a small scoop, you know, not, not a right. feed a scoop. Correct. Um, and uh, it is, comes in a 40-pound bag and is reasonably inexpensive for a good mineral supplement. Um, you have to be careful with mineral supplements when they come palleted. They have a filler because otherwise you can't press the stuff together. Right. You know, and um, pellets are done under heat yeah. and heat destroys vitamins and minerals. Yeah. The other thing that this medicine bag complete um, has is, um, and you can Google it under medicine bag project. Um, it has a lot of um, probiotics in it, mm -hmm. a huge amount. Yeah. And I have seen very good results with my own horses on this. So, and I know quite a few um, people now feed it and are very happy with it. So yeah. Yeah. Um, by chance, we also sell it. Right. <laughs> And uh, yes, awesome. And then to add to that, um, we do carry something called horsepower and it is similar to medicine bag complete. It's not quite as clean, I'm gonna say, as what the medicine bag complete is, but it's really designed for people that have to adhere to a budget. So if medicine right. bag complete is not if you just can't swing it or, and you know, like I know Jan's got like 18 horses or something like that, it may not be feasible, but we do have something called horsepower here at the office and um, we sell it in conjunction with the cool stance because it's the, um, it, it actually gets made out of a organic mill in the Midwest and it has a lot of the similar nutrients and the cost on it. We, did, we didn't compare it to Medicine Bag Complete, but we did a cost comparison on Platinum Plus, and it's, like, unbelievably, yeah. <laughs> unbel I, unbelievably I, I, so much more reasonable and, and missing all of those crappy ingredients. <laughs> and I remember I have looked at this for you, um, and, and it looked really decent. Um, yeah. So if, if cost is a factor, this... Uh, when people say, I can't yeah. afford this, yeah. um, I send them to Fadrell Horsepower. Right. So, um, yes. So, if you guys can, um, you know, please go to the website for the Stance Equine if you're interested in the medicine bag complete because they do carry it and they do sell it. Um, otherwise, we have it, you know, we've got another, another one as well. Um, so... From there, the next question is that are hay cubes or pelleted grass okay? Hay cubes um, or, or pelleted grass cubes or grass? Oh, either one. Why? That is uh, my counter question, why? Concentrated calories. The horse would be much happier to chew all day. And there's something to be said about chewing. When, you, when, when your horse chews, he produces an enormous amount of saliva. And that saliva um, in itself doesn't do anything, but when it ends up in the stomach, because he has to swallow this, it acts as a buffer for the acid in the stomach. And it really helps against ulcers. So a horse that chews all day not only has a satisfied mind, but it also has a buffered stomach. 
And that is a whole lot better than um, some of the stuff that the feed industry puts in, calcium carbonate. Right. So the, the particular person that asked is she's in a boarding situation, so she has to supplement at the barn that she boards at. Yeah. Supplement was, she has to give her horse more feed. Joe? Yes. Yes? Yes. Well, then, then give him some cold stands. Claudia, I think what she's saying is that she's in a, where she doesn't have pasture to take to put the horse out all the time, so she, she needs to supplement with some hay cubes or hay feed to make up for it. Well, you know, you have to do what you have to do. What we were talking here about is how can I get possibly, and, and eventually when this nutrition course comes to to into play. I will talk a whole lot more about this. What can we do to have the possibly best, healthiest horse? Right. So we don't have to worry, is he going to get sick tomorrow? Right. And because there is not a lot of information about nutrition out there, you know, so we do the best we can. Having said that, um, when, I, when I talk to people individually, I always um, try to encourage them to keep looking for other boarding situations where their horse is healthier and better cared for. Yeah. yeah? A horse that is hungry is no fun to live with. Correct. We, we invest so much money in our horses yeah. that we really need to get a lot of enjoyment out of them. Yes. Yeah, you're, so. you, yeah, ab, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, you know, for most of us here, they are a recreation. They're our outlet um, during COVID. They're our therapy, um, yeah. uh, especially more so, right? And so the thing of it is, is a healthy horse, like, on a long-term basis is going to be, it might be a little bit more up front to feed better quality uh, right. feed, better quality hay, better quality nutrition than having to deal with, say, a horse that is, I'm just using this horse as an example, the one that has the anhydrosis and heaves, you know, mm -hmm. she's 27 years old. And so now we're playing deep, not we, but that person's playing defense. And so she's on a couple, like the medication alone is a couple hundred dollars a month <laughs> yeah. like for one horse. And so, yeah. let, you know, it's like, I'd much rather, you know, be upfront and, and provide the absolute best on the prevention side versus um, just pumping yeah. them full of, you know, bad stuff to keep them healthy or keep them comfortable. It's not even healthy, it's just to keep them comfortable. Absolutely. So, yeah. So, well, we, we could go on forever. We could go on forever. Um, and we have a lot of people that are interested in an equine nutrition class. And so Ms. Claudia actually is in the middle of um, moving to a different location. And so we originally, when we set this up, we were going to uh, offer the equine nutrition class out there starting um, in another month. And that has to get postponed, but yay, that's a good thing. It's a great thing for Ms. Claudia. And um, so uh, stay tuned, stay tuned. We will let you know as more information becomes available at when the class will happen. And um, if you have any questions, Ms. Claudia has been so, so, so incredibly generous on offer. I don't know if she really realizes I might get a phone call from her next week going, dang it, Donna, why'd you let me do that? Um, but I know you guys are all amazing out there, and so is she. And she has offered her phone number for anybody that has any questions, and especially if you're dealing with difficult 
uh, situations. We didn't even get into mycotoxins and the detoxification process. Um, and that, I mean, you, we could talk like for a full hour on that alone. So um, any party, any parting words for our audience? This party? No, just go out and love your horses. Yes. That's so important. It's important for us and it's important for them. Absolutely. And, you know, like um, somebody very famous said, your horse doesn't care how much you know as long as he knows how much you care. Absolutely. And everybody who is here today and everybody who listens to this video cares about their horses. Absolutely. And they're... We we are all doing the best we can do on every given day. Ab absolutely. Absolutely. So thank you so much. And thank um, you for having me. Yes, we will definitely see you back sometime, maybe in 2021. And um, <laughs> everybody, uh, be sure to grab a copy of this recording. And if you feel the need or you're stuck, please feel free to reach out to Miss Claudia and hopefully we'll have an equine nutrition class coming out to you. Oh, sure. So many blessings. Everybody stay Thank safe. You. Stay healthy. Thank you again, Miss Claudia. You're amazing as usual. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.